Hi, you're watching Game Changer. I'm Kurt Pickering, co-host. My co-host, Michelle Harris, cannot be with us today. As our guest for today is a local Laker connoisseur, Eddie Danny Miller. <laughs> Dan, uh, Eddie, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, today's show is going to be about hoops du jour. We're going to talk a lot of NBA slash Laker slash Warriors Throw in some Clipper, you know, news there, and just kind of, just randomly go through uh, what's coming up in the 2018-19 season. But I got to just tell you a little shout out to one of my college buddies. Did I tell you about Randy? No. Man, he's sitting home at night watching the sports. He's got the newspaper. All of a sudden, bam! He gets hit side the head. His wife hit him with a frying pan. He goes. Why did you do that? She goes, I was going through your pants pocket and there's a piece of paper with the name Priscilla on it. And he goes, honey, I, that, I was at the horse races and that's a horse I bet on. She goes, oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry I did that. Two nights later, he's watching sports, got the newspaper, bam, it was a twice the size frying pan, she hammered him again. I mean, he barely kept from falling in, you know, on the floor. He goes, why did you do that? She says, your horse called. <laughs> Poor Randy. <laughs> so, uh, now on to basketball. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, something I think we've seen in the last couple years NBA basketball used to take two, three months off during the summer. And then all of a sudden, Las Vegas starts offering the summer league. Now, there's always been the summer league. I worked in it uh, back in the 80s and 90s at Lola Marymount University down in L.A. And then Warren Legary moved it to Las Vegas. That, that thing's just exploded. You know, it's sellouts. They're all on TV. This year was the first time... 30 teams, all the NBA teams played in it. But besides the summer pro league, social media has just, it's a frenzy. Tell me your thoughts on that. There's no let up on, on following the game. Yeah, it's, it's a 12 month thing now between the draft and they even cover uh, workouts. There's a lot of websites that even I go to. I kind of try to stay away from it because I can spend two, three hours looking at prospects, especially when the Lakers were drafting in the lottery. I kind of was um, learning about different players. But yeah, you can spend endless time researching stuff and looking up stuff because someone is writing about what, exactly what you're talking about. Well, and you go online and there's so many writers. I mean, I think some are wannabes. Some of their opinions are way out in left field, unrealistic. You know, they're giving their two cents on who the Lakers or the Pacers or someone should trade for, and it's so unrealistic. Right, and you also hear GMs talk a lot about, do you talk to the player and their agent and say, hey, look, this rumor is not true, and then finally the, the majority of them just don't even comment on it because it's not worth it because there's so much activity, like you said, that you just the players just kind of are, are learning to to get immune to it now. Well, I think a couple weeks ago, Magic, man, he, it was like he got called on the carpet in somewhat of a defensive mode where he said, hey, if I don't, you know, bring in great free agents, uh, I'll leave. You know, Jeannie Buss does not have to uh, fire me. I will resign. Of course, what happened? Right. Ooh. And did he kind of know that he might have had someone in, in, in the lurking? Or do you think maybe... That was uh, an, an innocent comment, but yeah, he, he definitely said he was going to resign after two summers. And so a couple weeks ago, the King did arrive in Los Angeles. We now have LeBron James on the uh, Lakers roster. What, what does that do? You followed Lakers since you were a kid. We won't say your, what your age is, but <laughs> it's between 20 and yeah. 39. Yeah. Well, let's just say uh, I have an older brother and his name is John, and my dad's name is Ed, as, as, as I am, and he named me Eddie as a second kid because the day that I was born, it was 
after Elgin Baylor. My mom said no. He was saying Elgin, no, <laughs> and she won, and yeah. so they defaulted to my dad's name. So yes, to, to answer your question, I have been a rabid Lakers fan for my whole life. Um, but what you mentioned about LeBron coming to L.A., it's still kind of hard to fathom that he actually is here. He's played 15 seasons, and so I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that he's in the twilight of his career. But I do think, as a Laker fan, that there's going to be quite a few good years as long as you know nothing drastic happens and he doesn't have a, a bad injury. I still think he's got many years uh, at, at peak level. With the roster the Lakers now have, do you foresee him being that point forward like he was with Cleveland the past four years where, man, he's dominating the ball and guys have to be ready, whether they're veterans, rookies. Man, when he kicks it to you and the shot clock's going down, he expects you to nail it. There's some pressure to play with him, no different than Kobe. Right. There was always pressure on, on the teammates. They better deliver when Kobe or LeBron's not taking it to the hole. Yeah, and I think this new team is uh, is kind of a blank canvas uh, as far as we, no one really knows exactly, except for Lakers management, how they anticipate playing. I kind of think he's going to uh, move up, meaning like he primarily played the two and the three in Cleveland in the first stint, and then he was pretty much a small forward as a three with Cleveland and Miami uh, this, the second time when he was with Cleveland. But I think he's actually going to play a lot of power forward. And I think him and Kuzmo will share the four and the five. And I think that, that that's kind of, they call that death lineup in Golden State. So whether they really go small and really push it, I do think that leads into Lonzo Ball's um, maximum efficiency is when he gets it and just really pushes it. So maybe LeBron might relinquish some of that ball handling duties. And this is just me speculating. And maybe he can run the floor like Carl Malone. And actually they can kind of alternate to where... He, Lonzo has the ball primarily. And the fact that they let Brooke Lopez go, um, I, I got a feeling Magic's wanting to see Showtime back on on the uh, hardwood floor for the Lakers again. Yeah. You know? I well, mean, they really don't. When you look, let's take a look at the Russian. Now, JaVale McGee is not a, you know, he's not a uh, thoroughbred, but he, he's very effective, you know, what he does. But, boy, Every one of their players, it's it's a fast tempo uh, style that that they bring. Yeah, if you if you think they retain KCP Caldwell Pope, he really can get after the, running to the three point line, and I think they're going to really the ball is really going to be just popping a lot, and I think they're they're going to really like you said uh, go up tempo, and they have a pretty deep roster. Um, as far as you know, Hart and KCP are both good at the two, and Ingram and Kuzma, and and even Lance Stevenson, who you know a little about. So I think they actually are going to run a lot during the season, and I think that's Rondo's value later in the playoffs and winning time. If Ball is up to speed, you know he might get some of those closing minutes. But I think, what they're, do you think? they're confident with Rondo, knowing that he can close the game. So do you think Luke Walton will start Ball and bring? Rondo off the bench or? That's a great question. I mean, he said to, to Rondo and his rep that the competition is open. And I don't think Rondo would sign there if he didn't feel that that was a valid statement. So that is probably, in my opinion, that is kind of a, even though it doesn't really matter who starts, it's who finishes type thing and how many minutes you get. But that is going to be an interesting development to see who plays and actually who closes the game as well. Josh Hart was MVP of the Summer Pro League that was just uh, completed and uh, probably coming off the bench, but, but quality minutes. Yeah, and Magic even alluded that he wants to start. So I think what they're doing is is they're really trying to have a, a real competitive training camp, and the Lakers are all about winning now, <laughs> which obviously Magic and Rob have always been about winning. but. When you have LeBron on your team, you know, there's going to be a lot of eyes on this team. And so uh, they're going to do whatever they need to do to foster winning and in trying to achieve the ultimate trophy. Well, going back to Magic again, uh, you know, it, it just looks like he, he is trying to create that real competition in practices. You know, there's those... 
those notorious stories where the practices back in the 80s would get so, some could be physical, but right. there might be a day where the guys aren't working hard. Magic and uh, Michael Cooper would tell Pat Riley, hey coach, take a break, we got this. Riley would leave, the coaching staff would leave, and Magic and Michael Cooper would unleash yeah. hell on, on them running and going through drills, and I mean just raising the level of intensity. And it wasn't that, as we know, that Pat Riley wasn't intense and demanding himself. But sometimes when it comes from the peers, yeah, you know, from, from your captains, the two captains there, you really do answer to them. So I'm not sure. Do the Lakers have captains? Or maybe they're going to name a couple this year. Yeah. I, I have a feeling LeBron James might be the yeah. candidate. Yeah. I think Brandon Ingram could, could grab one of those captain spots. He's kind of a quiet leader. He really gets after it. He's a good competitor. Starting to fill out a little bit. Man, he... I remember seeing him at a game, uh, at a G League game, the minor leagues, and I mean, his legs yeah. were so narrow. I mean, this yeah. kid was just, you know, bones. Yeah. Very little meat on him. Well, if you th think of it in Brandon Ingram's case, I kind of think of him as semesters. Like the first semester, it was a little underwhelming, although, you know, with his length and his acumen that he proved at Duke, it wasn't like Laker fans were worried. But then right around the All-Star break in the, of, of his rookie year, he really had a nice leap. And then the second year, he just took another huge leap. So I think he's 21 years old. So with his length and his, uh, you know, being able to finish kind of through some contact now, I think he's probably going to be a player that is going to become a household name in a year or two. Okay. And then uh, at the center position, JaVale McGee, uh, Zubak, and then they uh, drafted 25th pick of the first round, Mo Wagner, who is an outside player. So has a, you know, he has a three-point shot, which Zubik does not. So he may move up in the rotation there. And he time. was playing well in the summer league. Uh, he was actually rebounding the ball really well, which was, I think, was a little bit of a little worry from scouts' point of view, but his three-point shooting is really good. Shoots about 40%. Uh, and he has kind of an energy that Rob Palinka talks about a lot. They look for, uh, they were really impressed with Kuzma's interview and Josh Hart being like a winner from four-year player that I think Wagner kind of embodies uh, the, the, the spirit of play hard, have fun, but really be competitive. And so I think they've done a good job. Okay. Hey, uh, Moving on to another issue, the game has really changed tremendously. It used to be inside out. You know, you post guys up. If they got double team, you kick it back out or swing it to uh, the shooter. Now, you know, you see Golden State Warriors, they're five out, no post-up player. Right, right. Eventually they might. They might, you know, flash a guy or run a backdoor cut. But the game has changed dramatically back to 2015 in the playoffs when the Warriors decided to go small ball and it mm -hmm. worked because of the great shooters and movement without the ball. Yeah. Well, I think D'Antoni kind of started it with the Suns in the seven seconds or less era where the year that Steve Nash left Dallas, they got him as a free agent and he ended up uh, just playing the five best players, or at least that's what he responded when they asked him, because that was Nash, Quentin Richardson, Joe Johnson, Marion, and Stoudemire. So Johnson, Marion, and Stoudemire all moved up a position. They were the two, three, four, and then they became the three, four, and five. So uh, I think it started there, and with the no hand checking rule, you know, the game is not as physical. And I think all the analytical guys realize that three points versus two is 50% more. And so if you can chuck 30 of them and, and make 13 or 14, it's like a free four or five points if I did my math correct. But so, yeah, it's and it doesn't really seem like, you know, if you think back on Rick Smith and Ewing and Mutombo and all those guys, I don't, where are all they right now? <laughs> They're all retired. <laughs> yeah, I, I recall... It was uh, November 2015, sitting at Joe's Cafe with Bill Burka, the longtime Laker oh, yeah. guru that lives here in Santa Barbara. Yeah. 
And that evening, and this was the, the new season, a couple weeks into it, uh, Golden State versus San Antonio Spurs. And so it was kind of old school versus new school. And Bill said, if the Warriors win this game and by a, a pretty large amount, uh, he says the game will forever be changed. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened that night because the Warriors had just won a championship right. playing small ball against Cleveland. But many people thought, is that a fluke? Can you really win with a smaller lineup? And San Antonio really represented you know, the style of, and a slower pace game uh, inside out. Yeah. You know, they had inside players. And Golden State com clearly whipped their behind. And now it's copycat ball. Many and most of the NBA rosters are now going with that style. You know, you yeah. don't see the big postmen. But then what does Golden State do? They pick up DeMarcus Cousins. DeMarcus Cousins. What yeah. do you think on that move? Well, it's hard to say no if you get them with, for the mid-level, which they're in the luxury tax, so it was actually even less than the mid-level. It's their mid-level, which is the luxury tax mid-level, which I believe is uh, $5.3 million. So um, they have the luxury of not playing him because he's coming off an Achilles heel you know, tear, so maybe he comes back in Christmas time or January. They could even wait till February. So they, they can win a, a bunch of games because they obviously are the Warriors. And then hopefully for their sake, they integrate him and, and then they now would have a, a big center. The only thing I would question is if you play the first half of the season without him and then you implement him, which is a big guy as far as, you know, touches and volume and usage rate, you know, I'm sure Kerr and Bob Myers will know how to do it seamlessly, but that, there might be a little bit of a transition on changing the way they play, but I think they're totally open for that, and obviously they did because they signed them. Well, he now likes to play outside face the basket, so, and he's a decent passer, especially at, what is he, 6'11", 7 foot? Yeah. So he, uh, he, he can throw over the defense. He'll shoot the, the three occasionally, but he's probably just going to utilize this season to prove yeah. that he's uh, recovered from the injury and wait for that Brinks truck to show up and really get paid in, right. on his next contract. Right. Uh, Clippers, a little bit about the Clippers. They're, they're still kind of, you know, where are they headed? You know, they, it, it looked great when they had Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, they can, you know, seemed like each year they shot themselves in the foot in the playoffs. Yeah. And have, and last year they started to dismantle, you know, that unit. Yeah, well, you know, they had about a five-year window, which, you know, if you're looking back on it, that's almost kind of what you would want from a, from a management point of view. But just like you said, just a couple series uh, just didn't go their, their way. And so I think that window closed. Obviously, Blake moved on and Paul went to Houston and Jordan just signed with the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, so I think Jerry West is actually, if you look at his draft choices and the way he's kind of not having people sign a long-term contracts, you know, he probably feels very confident in, in a year or two that they'll be right back you know, to where they were. Well, L.A. is a desirable location, and good or bad, it just seems that, let's say, the top 25 players in the league, they tend to gravitate towards warmer climate, franchises that traditionally have won, and third, they, they like joining up with their buddies, don't they? Yeah, the players have a lot of control, and that's probably something that's hard for some people to realize that, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, players were under contracts for three, four, five, six, seven years. I remember Dr. Buss would give Magic an extension for a million dollars, you know, like eight years out. So uh, the way the collective bargaining agreement uh, has changed things and, and there's some different things they've done, but players now to maximize their earning potential become free agents and so it's tough for the general managers to plan because everything's going good and then a year or two x player you know is a free agent and so they don't have the continuity in the length of the contracts that they did in previous years and so that's 
kind of challenging, but it seems like fans really like player movement, and there's a lot of talk and rumors and stuff like that, so that kind of keeps the ball spinning. Yeah. Did you bring your list, Western Division or I, Western Conference? I did. Okay. So, uh, and we can, we can agree to disagree, and we're, it's just opinion, but um, let's go with, in the Western Conference, our predictions for 2018-19. Um, you want me to go first? Sure. I'm going to take Golden State to, to win the most games in the Western Conference. I'm going to go with them number one. Uh, Houston has lost a couple players, a reason, and Buda Bute, but I'm going to take them number two. Uh, this might be a stretch a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to go with the Lakers number three. And some even say they question whether the Lakers can make the playoffs, but I, I, I know what LeBron can do, you know, how he can just totally change your whole to his teammates, the, the difference between winning, losing, or um, if, if you're uncertain as, as a teammate, he'll, he'll yeah. very much ascertain for you we are going to win this game. He'll will them yeah. to play at, at, at the highest level possible. Uh, I'm going to take Oklahoma City fourth. I think addition by subtraction... Carmelo Anthony no longer on that roster. I think they get better. That they, they've added some players. Yeah. They're going to be so much quicker right. and uh, run, and I think they can be effective that way. Uh, number five, I'll go with uh, New Orleans Pelicans despite losing Rondo. Cousins no longer with them. Uh, very impressed with Utah. What they do, they're so consistent. They've got that great rookie that uh, really uh, impressed us in the playoffs. I'll go with Minnesota, number seven. Denver, number eight, which means there's some great teams. Well, I say great. Some, some really talented teams that will not make the playoffs. What's your top eight? Yeah, uh, we, I think we have the first four. I have Golden State, uh, number one, Houston, two, the Lakers, three, OKC four, I have Utah five, I put Denver at six, okay. um, and then Minnesota at seven, Portland at eight, and then you know San Antonio could easily be five through eight, and they then could. I have New Orleans a little lower than you yeah. at ten. You um, have New Orleans at ten? Yeah. The it's going to be interesting, Julius Randle. Yeah, he's going to fit much in well he there. helps them. I mean, he's, man, he came on so strong for the Lakers. That's interesting topic in itself the Lakers allowing him to uh, to go free they they got nothing for him right but the, the you know their whole game plan has been LeBron and a second uh, superstar that since Paul George signed with Oklahoma City that would be Kawhi Leonard yeah. let's talk a little bit about him there's a little bit of controversy that comes with him too yeah, well, he declined the Supermax, uh, $219 million. So <laughs> it's a little bit unchartered territory. Uh, he obviously has his, his eyes on, on something. So it'll be interesting to see how, how he does in Toronto. Um, it's, does it make sense for Toronto? I guess it, it's a question if they think they can re-sign him as opposed to a one-year rental. They could trade him to the Lakers, right. but what would the Lakers have to give up realistically? Uh, the Lakers, to match salaries, the only way they'd be able to do it is Lou Aldang would have to be in the trade, or he'd have to be, you'd have to recruit a third or fourth team to kind of reroute him. But I think the package would probably be just Dang and, and Brandon Ingram. Now, whether the Lakers want to give up on Ingram, who's 20, 21 years old, who possesses you know all the characteristics that you need for a good three man it's gonna be interesting but I think with the pressure that LeBron signing there and then I think they kind of potentially owe it to to not lose this first year window uh, a lot probably has to do with how they play but I think the Lakers whether they want to admit it or not would probably 
probably make that trade if Leonard shows that he's healthy and he's playing well. I think Leonard and LeBron as a one-two punch is basically, to me, reminiscent of like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. I mean, just two-way players, two players that can just completely impact the game. You need a steal, you need a bucket, you need a stop. <laughs> they can do it all. You need a rebound. Right. Yeah, yeah, they, the do-it-alls. Yeah. Um, so that's like Oklahoma City. They took the chance on Paul George, and he chose to stay there. You know, I don't know if I want to weather that cold winters that, that Toronto offers. Um, certainly they'll be able to offer Kawhi Leonard whatever, the max, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. They, they, they're they allowed to offer him five years, and I believe it's like 179 or something. Otherwise, he'll have to take a four-year deal. So... Um, his annual raises are a little bit less if he go if he does if you don't have his bird rights it's five percent raises instead of eight, I, but it it seems like Leonard's camp they they probably know what they want and and they probably are gonna you know find their way to where where they want to go they just he might just have to play a year, and and not technically being where he wants to go but. Um, do you think that he, his camp and him want to be a Laker like you read all the time? Oh, no question. Yeah. Grew up in Riverside, played at San Diego State. Right. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that, that – and there's, quite frankly, there's a difference between Oklahoma City and Toronto. You know, the fact that Paul George uh, is staying in Oklahoma City. If, those winners. I grew up in Michigan. I know yeah. about winners. Yeah. Toronto's just a little bit north of Detroit. So – that can make a man want to leave yeah. and go to Los Angeles for sure. Yeah. And I think he's getting influenced uh, um, by his uncle, who has a big impact in his life. Um, and I think they were a little bit disappointed with the offer they got from the shoe company. So I think they want a little bit more notoriety. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Eddie, there's so much we could talk about. We covered a little bit of the Western Conference. Didn't touch on the Eastern, the players on, on that side of uh, our nation. But uh, let's have you back again. We'll talk more basketball. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you, Kurt. All right. Thanks for joining us on Game Changer. We'll see you next week.